Chapter 7, Part 7, Factors Affecting Elimination Reactions. So the first of the factors is the structure of the substrate, whether it's methyl, primary, secondary, tertiary. The structure of the base, whether it's a small base or a bulky base. The temperature, the strength of the base, the concentration of the base. And remember, usually a reaction will get some substitution and some elimination unless the conditions are very specific. Elimination and substitution reactions are in competition. So let's take a look at the first factor, structure of the substrate. You cannot eliminate on a methyl substrate. You need to have at least two carbon atoms in order to form a carbon-carbon double bond, and a methyl substrate does not have that. Primary is the least likely to eliminate. Secondary and tertiary are very likely to go through elimination um, because the substitution is most likely hindered and a secondary or tertiary substrate um, will end up with a more substituted alkene. So let's take a look at the first factor, structure of the base. Small bases are more likely to do substitution. Um, so for example, hydroxide, methoxide, ethoxide, methanol, water, these are all a lot more likely to go through substitution um, reactions unless you add in another factor, such as adjusting the temperature. Bulky bases are usually unable to participate in substitution and therefore are more likely to eliminate. So T-butyl um, or T-butoxide, phenoxide, isopropoxide is maybe a little on the edge here, and cyclohexane oxide. Our next factor is temperature, and this one's a really handy little trick. Heat favors elimination. If you want elimination to be the major product, then crank up the temperature. Elimination is favored by entropy because more um, molecules are going to be made through elimination than substitution. So for example, in um, this particular reaction, we are reacting with T-butoxide in T-butanol as the solvent, and we have a secondary alkyl halide. So the two different products for elimination can form, and cranking up the temperature to 70 degrees helps make sure that we're not going to see any substitution of T-butoxide in the place of the bromine. So the next factor is the strength and concentration of the base. Using a high concentration of a strong and non-polarizable base, such as an alkoxide, will favor E2 and only E2. Weaker bases can allow for SN1 or E1. Um, so for example, sodium ethoxide in ethanol or potassium T-butoxide in T-butanol are both examples of stronger bases that are more likely to participate in elimination. So let's talk about the difference between nucleophiles and bases. Um, if something is strong and slightly polarizable, um, it's going to be a better base than a nucleophile. So for example, hydroxide, azonide, or alkoxides. If it's weak and polarizable, um, it's going to act as a better nucleophile than base. So this includes your halogens, um, this includes alkyl thiolates, um, this also includes carboxylates. So in this first example, we have isopropyl bromide and we have ethoxide in ethanol. We are probably going to see mainly elimination, um, especially if we were to increase the temperature. Um, we could also see some substitution, but again, increasing the temperature is going to favor elimination. So if that's your goal, that's what you need to do. Whereas with our acetate, we're likely to see a lot more substitution than elimination because acetate is not a particularly strong base. And sorry, I'm gonna redraw that because it ended up kind of in the other image. Also, acetate um, doesn't have a very focused nucleophile. Remember that there is resonance between the two oxygens so that the negative charge is being shared by both of the oxygens. That means that the oxygen that looks nucleophilic 
is actually sharing that negative charge with the other one. And that's not going to make for um, a very strong base, but it could work as a nucleophile. If we have a primary substrate, it's going to favor substitution. If elimination is the goal, we're going to need a bulky base and high temperature. So um, in our first example, we have bromoethane and we're reacting with ethoxide and ethanol. If we have the temperature at 55 degrees, we're still going to see primarily SN2 um, with a very small amount of elimination. Of course, increasing the temperature might give you a better chance, but remember that ethanol is um, going to have a pretty low boiling point and so will bromoethane. So probably not gonna be able to increase the temperature too much unless you put it under pressure, which is not usually a very safe idea. Um, also, the easiest way to get um, primarily elimination here would be to just swap out our ethanol for a much bulkier base. Notice the temperature is staying the same, but the outcome of the reaction is quite different. If we have a secondary substrate and you react with something that is a strong base, so it works better as a base than a nucleophile, such as alkoxides, it's probably going to favor elimination. If you have a weaker base, something that works better as a nucleophile than a base, such as alkyl thiolates, we are more likely to see substitution. So in this example here, we're reacting with sodium ethoxide and ethanol in the conditions that we've been seeing over and over through these slides we're still going to see primarily elimination and very little SN2. If we have a tertiary substrate, SN2 is no longer possible. Both E1 and SN1 will occur. E1 is usually favored. Um, remember that elimination is favored at high temperature, um, so no substitution will occur in that situation. Um, and then if you have a lower temperature, you have a better chance of seeing some substitution. So notice here um, that at room temperature, we still see 91% elimination um, because we are reacting with a stronger base here. This is not just ethanol. And so um, we can just extract a proton and kick out the bromine to get our elimination product. Um, we will also see a little bit of the substitution product formed through SN1. But if we bump the temperature up to 55 degrees, we will see primarily elimination, actually 100% elimination, although the mechanism is unclear. Um, it's impossible to tell the difference between the E2 and E1 products here.